Okay, we have a an interesting integral. This one's from the Vienna integration, B2024, problem 10. We have an integral from zero to two pi of the absolute value of sine x plus the absolute value of cosine x dx. Okay, the first thing I tried on this was actually breaking this up into four quadrants, four different integrals. Doing it that way, we know the if we know if we can drop the sign on these or add a minus sign, we know exactly what we have and we can do easy integrals. The trouble with that when you have to add it all up at the end, it's so tedious and there's so many places to make a mistake, it turned out to just be kind of a terrible method. So what I want to do instead is use this principle of integration where if we have some integral f of x from 0 to 2a, where like in our case we've got the 0, like our 2a is going to be 2 pi. If our integral is this and we check the value of f of 2a minus x, if this is equal to, if we just get back our f of x, that's going to allow us to reduce the bounds. We can bring a 2 up front, the bounds go from 2a to a, and we end up with the same function. We can just kind of repeat this over and over again. So just going ahead with this on our integral, we want to see if this is going to work. So we want to do this test right here. For f of 2a minus x, that's going to be, for this case, it's going to be, we want to look at what's the value of f of 2 pi minus x. Well, we have our values for the sine and cosine of 2 pi minus x. And you'll see you basically just get back the same thing. The absolute value sign is just going to wipe out that minus sign. So clearly what's going to happen, we're going to get back our f of x and we're allowed to do this. So I can just go ahead and update this, bring a 2 out, reduce this, or cut the bound in half. So now we're going from 0 to pi of the same thing here. But now we can just do the exact same thing again, but now our upper bound, our 2a value is pi. So we need to evaluate f of pi minus x. For that, we have our sine of pi minus x, cosine pi minus x. The same kind of thing that was happening, right? It's just the minus signs on the cosine instead of the sine now. The absolute value is going to wipe that out. So we can use this principle here again, bring another 2 out front, 2 times 2, we'll have 4, cut the bound in half. Now we're going from 0 to pi over 2. But now at this point, we've got to just stop and go ahead and integrate because now we're just in the first quadrant. We could just drop our absolute values and integrate it. I'm just going to do it one more time just for fun. It doesn't really matter. So what we're going to have here, our 2a value now is pi over 2. So we want to find f of pi over 2 minus x. So we have these formulas here. This is a little different now because this sine x over here, this is going to become cos x and this is going to become sine x. We reverse the order, but it doesn't matter. We still get back the same thing. So this is still true. We do this one more time. We bring another 2 out front, we create an 8, and now we're going from 0 to pi over 4. But now at this point, I think if we try it again, I don't think it's going to work, but it's also probably going to make the problem more harder because we don't really want to evaluate this at pi over 8. But now, because we're going from 0 to pi over 4, this is first quadrant, so I can drop absolute values on this. Just drop absolute values. And then we can just go ahead and integrate this. We're going to have this 8 out front. I'm just going to go out of order. So integrating cosine x, this is going to become sine x integrating sine x that's going to be minus cosine x and we just need to evaluate from zero to pi over four and then evaluating this we'll have our eight then sine at pi over four that's going to be one over square root of two minus cosine at pi over four is the same thing so this first piece actually this is going to be a zero then for the second part evaluating sine at zero that's a zero evaluating cosine at zero that's just one Minus times minus is plus here. One times eight gives me my final solution of just eight. Now, one quick note on what I did here, reducing the bounds. You can do the exact same thing from the graph, because if you look at the graph, you can see that it just repeats. You can see it as repeating four times or eight times, and it's the exact same thing, just looking at the period of these sine and cosine functions. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good day.